Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of M Creator Lore. Today what we're going to be working on is a variable system for seasons. So we're going to be introducing a brand new item to indicate uh, what kind of season it is that will give some information and we'll be also introducing a very simple but uh, something that we can expand on later uh, for other mechanics. Uh, a seasonal system which we also need for crops which will be really important so um, at the moment I needed to create the variables for all these items or for all the uh, mechanics so I decided to go with two strings to uh, display what season it is uh, this will not only be able to be used for a display for the number or the uh, the actual season, but it will also uh, allow us to test for the season as well. So that's why I'm using strings for that. And then I am using numbers for the uh, season day, which allows us to test for the current season day. And then a maximum season day, which allows us to basically know how much the season can go up to. Uh, this might be able to be changed through game rules. I might be able to figure out something later on. Uh, the season temperature, this will allow, impact how the global temperature is for the dimension. We'll eventually add unique mechanics for that. But um, season temperature is one of those things that I wanted to make sure that was kind of dynamic in a sense. So I made sure to add a minimum and a maximum season temperature. And the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and create the world season script. So this will run on the world side and we're going to be using a global procedure for basically on world update tick uh, so or tick update this will allow us to at the beginning of the day one tick in uh, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, set the uh, the basically the script to run so it will only run when this tick actually happens as long as it's uh, one tick over or a certain amount we might even be able to optimize it a little bit more so nothing everything doesn't run exactly on this tick by making it a little bit more dynamic using a future um, thing uh, using randomized uh, integers so we might be able to set that up a little bit later on but I'll be taking a look into that to see if it actually helps at all but I don't want it too many ticks out but you know having it enough ticks where it won't matter too much is still a good idea the next thing that i needed to do was test for the day if the day is equal to or greater than the maximum world season day so basically that means that it, if it is over the amount then what we want to do is we want to run the script inside of it and if there is a condition basically that it isn't then we would just want to increase the day by um, basically one so we're going to use a if statement uh, or an else statement to basically run that other additional script and then inside here what we want to do is we want to add a total of four different components uh, we're going to be testing for each world season name and this will allow us to basically test for the different types of seasons so um, for example spring and then we want summer and autumn and I think I ended up uh, rearranging this a little bit maybe uh, maybe not I basically what I wanted to do is update the season for the uh, rotation so basically if it's spring then it'll turn to summer if it's summer then it'll turn to autumn if it's autumn then it will turn to winter and if it's winter it will or if it's any anything else then it will basically uh, turn to spring so spring will be basically the important part so this will be winter and then this will be spring so perfectly like that and then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and update the minimum temperature so basically this is going to be dependent on the season which will allow us to set a minimum uh, temperature range that will impact the global temperature range in a future video um, but this is important because I needed it between a certain value. I didn't want to increase it over too much because degrees are pretty um, kind of like a hard system to work within. So I basically only increased it about five per thing I decided. So basically negative uh, 10 to negative five 
uh, for the system and then negative 5 to 0 and then 0 to 5. This should give a good range for the mechanics that we will need later on in the video. All right, so basically what this will do is it will allow us to go ahead and uh, set the minimum range, which will eventually be determined by the maximum range. So uh, we're gonna use the minimum range as the base value, and then we can basically make a random number from the minimum value, as long as it's plus one to plus five. So that will give us a basically a 10% or a 10 valued range. So for example, if it's uh, five, then it will go to 10. So that will build up basically our uh, 10 degrees of our value based on the season, which should help. And I'm moving that down to the bottom because we don't need to have it for each one. Um, the other thing that we need is to basically set the minimum and a maximum to our season temperature, which is our basically the value that will update each day. So this will um, allow us to change the temperature each time the day is updated. So we're going to set the minimum maximum temperature for that. And then we wanted to set the world day to one for this top one. And then the bottom one, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set this to the day the season day plus one so this will allow us to increase the day and change the global temperature just by a few random variables so that will basically consist of the actual script i'm just adding a few more extra notes so i don't forget what this script does and it will also help other people that are using the uh, workspace for their own projects to know what the mechanics does as well so this is why I'm basically setting up the notes. All right, so basically that was it. I don't think I added anything else to this particular procedure. I saved it and then it's all set up ready to actually go. The next thing that I wanted to do was actually work on a season device item, which will allow us to go ahead and set the, um, well, display the information about the season, all the variables that we just created. And I wanted to create a um, actual system for the device for um, the lore text. So special information will provide us a visual uh, that we can save per, to, per device. And I wanted to also make sure that we can set the item states and a few other things. So we're gonna need a couple extra variables for that or triggers. So the first thing that we need to work on is when the item is in the inventory. So basically when it's in the inventory tick, then what we want to do is we want to actually make a variable sync to the player variable, uh, which will allow us to go ahead and know when the season is like that we can actually use for item states or something like that. Um, the, the problem between working between item states and the actual, um, what do you call it, the um, global variables is sometimes you have to move things over like this to the player version so it can be detected. The next thing that we needed to work on was the item states, which basically allows us to update the item depending on the season variable. So for example, I'm gonna use a season ID and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set a variable system based on this. So it will be um, basically taking that player variable that we just created and we're going to go ahead and set the season. So it's summer, uh, autumn, and then winter and then the last one will be spring for the return type so we're going to go ahead and return a number and we're going to set this to three two one and then zero so we can use those values for our main script so now we'll have a season id and we can set this to one which is going to be summer uh, two which is going to be autumn three which is going to be winter and then spring is automatically set up. So right click trigger, which will allow us to display specific information to the um, player as well as give the player uh, or the item basically something to dis 
display as special information. So I wanted to make sure that the item is in the player's main hand. So we can basically swing the main hand, which will give it this script basically some additional um, visual confirmation that it will actually be something happened. So uh, by default, the item isn't swung. So we need to make sure that that basically gets added. The next thing that we needed to do was make a if statement and we're going to test if the um, basically NBT for this item is uh, lower display. That's what I'm basically calling it. And what lower display will do is it will cycle between the uh, lower text or the special information for the item. So we're going to basically make a timer system kind of, but a one that is linked up to a single event where we right click with the item and it will update the uh, the rotation of the item for the um, thing. We also want to test if the value is less than six. So if it is equal to six, then we want to reset the lower display value to one, which will allow us to start the loop over again. If it's under six, say five, then we want to increase that loop by one until it does go to six. So basically that's what we're setting up here. And I'm just basically setting up the timer system and making sure all the notes are in place so people know what um, is going on and stuff like that. So I'm trying to add more notes to some of the more complex procedures and stuff like that. So it's a little bit easier because the mod is open source now. So I'm hoping that um, in the future it'll be a little bit easier for people to understand what kind of mechanics is going on and stuff like that. So basically this is just to reset the uh, lower syst the lower display. And then what I needed to do was basically create a confirmation each time this value is updated. So I'm going to test for very specific um, values after I finish writing a note for this. So basically test the MBT lower display value then prints out the message to the contents of the player. So basically um, we're going to use the print message because the player will be holding the item when they do it. So we know that the player is going to be able to be seeing this message. So we're going to set this to a, a, um, a static value, which is basically equal to one, equal to two, equal to three, equal to four, equal to five, and then equal to six. And each one of these, we need to basically give a print message. We're going to do it on the action bar so it doesn't spam chat. And not that, you know, it would be just spamming chat for the player, but not all players on the server, but we wanted to make sure. So I'm going to go into the character map, which is a Windows feature, and just grab the um, selection sign so we can basically add some color codes. And then I'm going to basically go season name, and then I'm going to do a colon and then a space, and then we can basically add our season name. Now this needs to be on the world side variable because I don't know why, but it wasn't working with uh, the player variable, but it was good to know that it can be done. I think it wasn't working. Maybe I didn't test it. Maybe it was the other one that was working on that didn't work. But um, I ended up using global variables because that's what I had to actually display as, and it just worked out fine that way anyways. So this will basically display for the world that the player is in. So uh, this is perfect for what we need. Uh, then, then I just basically added all the different, um, the, the maximum day, day, season name, and the temperature values. So we all had those set up. Uh, the next thing that we needed to do was basically go ahead and uh, save this because we're going to need this for the next script. So I basically saved that, went back to visual, and then we can start setting up the actual display system. So rather than have the um, print message, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this and we're going to basically apply this to the um, lower text, so the special information. So we're going to end up adding all these to here and the last value, you probably notice that we have one extra one and that's going to be the default value. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to print out a message uh, for the player uh, to know that they can right click with the item and as long as it's in their main hand 
and that way the item can give information. So it took me a couple of attempts to figure out what um, information I needed to go ahead and actually um, provide for this, but I decided to click item when in a main hand. That should be good enough. I also changed the color code to green uh, so people could know that it's a good thing. And I just added an extra note to a notation to basically say that it was basically for um, the default text for the item. So, all right. So now that all that's done, uh, we can go ahead and just set some item properties for the item. Uh, this is just uh, setting up the position for the item as well in the creative inventory and, you know, just some other minor things. In game, I wanted to just test all of this. So by default, we're going to be in spring. There are some uh, downsides to this particular thing, but you can see the green text it said basically uh, um, the click to right click. And we can see that there are some minor bugs that I'll have to sort out the, there isn't the space between these two particular values. I need to make sure that there's a space between them. There is a space between temperature and I think all the temperatures are one are fine, but we can also see it on the action bar that pops up as well as the lower text so we can hover over it later on, which is great because it, maybe you don't want to actually see a very specific one. You can just hover over it, which is great. All right, so I'm going to now set the time multiple times. I think we have it. I have to set it to like 12 times, um, but you might have noticed that the day temp the day started at one or two or something like that. So we're going to need to uh, change that a little bit. And I also discovered a bug while recording this video. The um, flowers were actually popping up in regular planes biomes and I needed to basically make sure that they didn't do that. So I fixed that as well um, off camera, but um, it was just a matter of specifying a specific biome, the flower biomes, but you can kind of see the grass growth, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so basically this is autumn, so day 12, um, or temperature and all this stuff. So we can see all this at work, autumn now. And one more uh, time to basically get the um, winter version, which is supposed to be um, holly, with, holly with some holly berries. Um, it kind of looks like a green carrot, but it is what it is. Um, all right, so basically, yeah, that's a works pretty good. So temperature, minimum temperature is nine, negative five. So we have all this information that we have perfect. And I'm just going to set this one more time to a day cycle. So or back to spring just to make sure that everything works. So this is going to say spring perfect. And we can update all these variables and it says everything that we need. All right, so one other thing that I wanted to show um, before we uh, end the video is basically that the items are um, unique to themselves. So if we hold another item, you can see uh, the, the help text is actually unique to that particular item. So we can see that um, the one that we're using has the season day where the other one has the right click event. That means that other players will be able to uh, customize their um, season devices and see what they want to see um, independently without changing it between other items. Um, another thing that I wanted to show was just the script that I was working on to get the uh, cliffs to generate a little bit nicer. So uh, this takes a little bit of, like it was a lot of to figure out, but it uses features uh, to actually make things that are a little bit more um, compact. So you might see it where those single blocks are of grass. Uh, that's basically where the mechanics uh, ends up running. So all this in here, uh, some other parts, um, a lot of the single block ones are where the actual mechanics have run and some of the straighter cliffs are from vanilla. So it blends really nicely with the actual mechanics. And uh, one other thing that I want to note is I am working on a little bit different format for the lower series. Um, I'm still going to be doing this one uh, where I work on minor projects, but the next one, next kind of thing that I'm working on takes a little bit longer to do and it's more condensed and it tackles some more larger projects. So I'll be releasing one of those in the near future. 
still have a lot of recording. It's probably going to take a couple weeks in order to get something that is uh, tangible, but we'll be working on that um, pretty soon. Um, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, write the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.